Good morning peeps! It's a couple of hours before I actually publish this video so I'm recording this bit the day after I record the rest of the video that's about to follow and I was bringing you part two of the whole food blogging thing but do you know what I am sat here just pulling my hair out trying to make this interesting for you and honestly it's going to be dull as dishwater. So I actually finished the blog post really early I think by about half 11 yesterday morning and then I just went out and played on the farm and got jobs done and stuff and I've got a ton of footage from that so forgive me I'm just going to bin all the boring stuff so you ain't getting a part two to the food blogging saga. Um, I have finished the recipe it is published so I'll leave a link to that below if you want to go and check out and see the photos um, or grab the recipe key, of course because hey it's a good one. <clears throat> and if you've got chickens and you also have gluts of eggs right now then please just go and get the recipe you need it end of story so let's get into it welcome to yesterday today we're done the blog post is up and gone and out there um i've shared it there's no more shares that will need doing over time but that's all i need to do for today really like that's the bare bones it's now quarter past 11 so in total that's taken me about a couple of hours this morning and probably um, i don't know four or five hours yesterday and then however long it took me the first day when i first made that frittata say an hour maybe two hours uh so yeah it's kind of, I guess it's one full day's work to get a basic blog post from concept to published and shared. I reckon you're probably looking at a total of around eight hours. If you have problems with the recipe, if it's very precise or if it needs an awful lot of research, or if you cock up and have to make it umpteen times, then obviously those numbers, like it just goes through the roof. It can take a lot longer than that. But I guess six to eight hours for me is probably how long it takes to do one blog post. <gasps> so quarter past 11 not even lunchtime yet i'm having me a cold brew i think i'm gonna go and see my chickens too and look it's still beautiful and sunny oh my gosh look at that that looks so cool on my screen that's wicked let's go play outside hey little tinker duck Oh dear, I've just interrupted this little lady. Would you like me to shut the door, sweetheart, so you can finish off? Oh, you're very sweet. <laughs> Have you gone shy? <laughs> I think maybe I'll come back in a little while. Give the poor little chicken a break. So I thought we'd come and see our little tomato plants in the polytunnel whilst our little chicken finishes her business. They're looking a little bit sad, which isn't surprising. It's going to be a shock to a plant being chucked from a nice cosy little pot into a great big polytunnel, relatively speaking. Um, but that's okay, they'll settle in soon. And our nights have been very cold the last few nights. Even though these guys are in a polytunnel, it's still going to get very chilly in here. And this is the saddest looking one of all four. But that's fine. I'll give them a good drink today and they'll be fine. It must be like an hour later and she's still there so this has given me hope that she might have be going broody so I'm gonna leave those eggs under her because if she does go broody I've got two pheasant eggs that I could get her to hatch sorry lady you carry on so I'm gonna poop pick and egg collect around her um, but I think I better just turn the camera off and just get on with it just so she doesn't get sketched out and get off those eggs that would be amazing if we had a broody, perfect timing. So I just threw some sweeties outside so she got off the nest. So all I'm gonna do is take a Sharpie and just mark these three eggs. And these are warm, she's definitely been sitting on these. 
the Loman chickens, the brown breed that I've got, they're not renowned for going broody, so this probably won't work in fairness, but I thought it worth a try. So we do have a chicken, the one that's kind of speckled brown that we call pheasant, because she kind of looks like a pheasant. She has gone broody a few times before. So if I leave these three eggs in here, then hopefully it'll tempt one of them to go broody and then we can hatch some pheasants just for fun because hey why not I don't starve these chickens, but anyone would think I did. The way they pounce when I bring food in. Funny girls. Um, that does look empty, but look, I promise they do still have food in there. But it does need topping up, that's for sure. about to go out for a walk but then that happened and I don't fancy getting caught out in a school so don't know what to do now all righty it's garden time just been over to see mum she's got more oh gosh she did say lentils aren't they I keep forgetting chickpeas or lentils I think they're lentils and monge too more of them to go in so we've got the same as this and the same as this already in but she just wanted to hold these back in case they either got eaten by mice or we had a cold snap but we're both eager to get those in now. She's also had ordered the, I think she ordered these ages ago and they've only just come through. These are two different types of shallot. So I'm going to go and sow those. Oh, that reminds me, I've got some carrots to sow as well. And we were going to alternate the shallots with the carrots. Let me go and try and find the carrot seeds <laughs> next to my rubber glove stash. Looks well dodgy, doesn't it? Right, what we got, oh, here they are. So we've got a purple one, a mixed colour one, a purpley orange one. Is that it? What else have we got hiding back here? More parsnips, more radishes. Oh, we've still got that bee and butterfly wildflower mix. We've got chamomile. Got more parsnips. Oh, heck. Yes, that's it. Okay, I've got quite a lot to sow, right? So let's go and get the carrots and the shallots in and then see where we are after that. These are my tiny little shallot seeds. So apparently they've got to go a quarter of an inch deep, 12 inches between rows, and a third of an inch or one centimeter between seeds. Oh my Lord, this is all very precise. I'm not the most precise gardener in the world. Right, you lot can keep an eye on me and make sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> this is painstaking and these are an inch apart so oh that's no good is it let's try and get them closer wow we oh no dropping two together how precise other people are at this 
Do you all just sprinkle and lob? Or do you actually do it meticulously to the exact? Apparently there's 150 seeds in there. Well, I don't think so. I've just put all of them in that row. That can't have been 150. Oh dear. Oh, how hard is this to write on a round stick? Oh well, it doesn't need to be tidy. Just need to be able to read it. And the stick doesn't need to be in long. I just want it to mark the rows, just so we don't go and put anything else in there, really. So thinly, oh, I can be a bit more uh, relaxed with the sewing of this one. And these are these awesome purple carrots, aren't they cute? And in case you were wondering, that's our pretty little carrot seeds. This old, um, I don't know what the name of this is, but this lovely old metal thing, this was my dad's. Isn't it awesome? I love using my dad's tools. It's a lovely connection to the past. Ah, uh, I'm just coming out to see the potatoes and look! Don't they look beautiful? They look quite bridal, don't they? So pretty. So, come and see this potato patch. Holy moly! So, tell me about potato... Cow your bum out the way, cat. Tell me about potatoes, people, because I don't really grow them because we, um, we've had such problems with blight over the years. So I stopped growing them a few years back. Do they normally grow this fast? Like, they're putting out an inch a day, surely. I'm going to have to earth these guys up again. But is this because they're on what was our old chicken run? So this just got a ton of nutrients in the ground? Is this normal? Does everybody's potatoes look like this? I can't get over it. They're nuts. Anyway, I'm going to grab the hoe and try and earth them up again. But I don't think I've actually got enough dirt to earth these up properly because they're so tall. If you can hear that purring, yes, Sassy Cat is right next to you guys. Come on, Sassy. Grab a hoe. Give me a hand. This is the radishes coming up, I think. So if you remember, I sowed the radishes with the parsnips because these germinate far, far quicker than the parsnips do. There's more over here as well. So that's exciting. I love radishes. Oh my goodness, either raw or roasted. I don't care. I just love them. This is our little black mulberry just breaking out into leaf. Those onion sets I put in a few weeks ago, they're doing really well. Really well, actually. I'm really pleased with them. This is uh, four potatoes that Johnny put in that he got from the supermarket. They just were left in the bottom of a bag and they'd started sprouting. So I didn't know if it would work. So he's like, oh, what the hell, let's just try it. But yeah, they're definitely all right. They're well happy. The hawthorn looks like it's about to break into flower. all those tiny little buds they're about to erupt that's one of our old little chicken houses we put our new rescue hens in that last summer when they arrived and just fenced off this corner of the chicken run just to keep them safe from the older girls I'm not sure there's a better feeling than a gardener looking over their garden as stuff starts to grow it's so exciting this is a little wild strawberry plant or an alpine strawberry it grows in really scrappy scrubby ground and if you look and there's a couple of their very teeny weeny little fruit they do get slightly bigger in the summer if they have enough rain but not much bigger than this they are really really small fruit
when you come back in the kitchen and you find half a glass of cold brew with ice still. That is priceless. Lovely people, I am out of here for the day. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Please feel free to whack the thumbs up if you did. And I'm going to catch up with you in tomorrow's video. You know that I am. I will be here present and correct. As always, keep smiling, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Over and out.